Hey guys, welcome back. Luca here. Today I want to talk about what are some of the top languages that I think you should definitely try to pick up or practice. It's uh, 2023 and we can tell the economy for tech is not going so well. So given the circumstances, what to make sure you're still relevant when the economy do become better. And they vary from front end and back end. Also mobile versus full stack. Before you dive in, you want to really focus on which product area are you most interested in. Are you trying to go into full stack? Are you trying to go into mobile? Or are you, you know, more catered towards back end only or front end only or infrastructure? And all these can decide which one of these languages that I'm about to show you that you should definitely pick up. First on this list, it's Kotlin. Kotlin, it's gaining a lot of tractions. Not only because it's such a flexible language, but also Android programming rely heavily on this. So if you want to learn something that's very useful for both backend as well as mobile development, focusing on Android, Kotlin will be your go-to language. Kotlin is kind of like the better version of Java where they do a lot of things smoother and they add a new annotation. It's kind of like what people expect the Python to be. And of course, Kotlin's not only for Android, it can also use it for a lot of backend services. So making it very powerful. Let's say you're interested in both full stack or mobile, but you don't know which one to go into. Learning Kotlin kind of covers all bases. It makes it so you can easily transition into a full stack developer, easily do some sort of like, you can easily do server side or even infrastructure related work with Kotlin. And if you want to push towards the mobile space, Kotlin also allow you to do that. So I tried Kotlin a, a bunch of time and I think Kotlin is actually a very good and powerful language. It can maintain like a very core Java styled focus. So you can do a lot of service pattern really, really well. You can do factory methods. You can do a lot of design that's like really, really well where other languages might lack. So, uh, so that's why I say Kotlin is definitely something that you can consider on the list. And the next one is uh, Tuffy. It's actually Golang. Go was something that I was really, really interested in back in like 2018 because it was first introduced and brought into popularity by Google. And many people realized, wow, Go could become something that's really, really powerful. And indeed, they didn't disappoint. A lot of infrastructure related works, a lot of server side related works. And if you are interested in doing like multi-threading, like infrastructure work, Go will be the go-to language for you. I know at Google, a lot of teams uses Go for the backend infrastructure work. For example, I know like the Google Photos team, for example, they use a lot of Golang. So if you're interested in particular, thinking about how to deal with distributed systems, how to do infrastructure works, or even backend, Golang will be a perfect language for you. But of course you have to be aware, Go isn't something that's really easy to pick up. And when I was using it, it's actually very different from a lot of the languages that I was used to. It's kind of similar to Python in a way, but it's also very different. So I would say Go has a pretty steep learning curve. So that's definitely something you want to be aware of. And a lot of companies, newer companies, for example, like they are picking up Go, but other existing like bigger companies, they might already have C++ or Java in place. So they might not really look into for that Go. So keep that in mind. But Go overall is a very powerful language and if you're really interested in the infrastructure and the infra or backend work and say like oh client side isn't for me then Go would be something perfect for you. And next up on my list is Python. Python is just such a fun language that you can use. For example doing interviews like Python would be like the go-to language that I recommend a lot of people to use because it's so simple and so easy to write code. And Python is also very fun because a lot of machine learning libraries are available on Python and a lot of developers use Python to do like data cleaning, data pipelines. So Python give you this flexibility to not only be a server side language, but also like a data science or machine learning related language. So you really get to take advantage of this whole ecosystem. Of course, there are a lot of frameworks that also uses Python. For example, Instagram is built on Django for a lot of the tools. And of course, back in the day, they might've used Python for like client side, but now it's a lot less. So Python is definitely something amazing that you can use for a lot of different things, not just server side, but also data science or machine learning. So if you are looking for a perfect data science or machine learning language, then Python is for you. And if you are also interested in, you know, sharpening your skill for interviewing and potentially getting ready for some roles, then like Python would be perfect for you. But one thing I do want to say is like, based on my observation for like all these bigger tech companies, Python usage is actually very, very low. Most teams aren't using Python for a lot of things, 
But good thing is, if you are learning Python, you can easily transfer a lot of these things you learn into some of the la other languages. For example, Go, for example, Kotlin, because some of the syntax like are kind of similar. And I just want to give an honorable mention before I get to the last one. The honorable mention will definitely be Swift. Swift is something that you are fully committed. Okay, I want to be an iOS developer. If you want to become an iOS developer, Swift is probably something that you want to learn. Of course, a lot of the you know older iOS apps aren't built in Swift, but I do see a lot of newer teams are slowly migrating to Swift, kind of similar to how Android is migrating away from Java to Kotlin. So if you want to go into mobile development and iOS is something that you're really passionate about, Swift will be your best friend. But of course, Swift is more like a one-trick pony. A lot of times, people mostly just use it for iOS. I haven't really seen a lot of times where people use Swift as a server side, but of course, it is a possibility. But overall, Swift is most powerful when used with iOS development. Last but not least, I think the most important or the best language that you can learn right now is JavaScript. JavaScript is just such a very flexible usage languages, and it's by far the most popular languages. If you look online, people are always talking about React, people are always talking about Angular, these frameworks, and they are built on JavaScript. Of course, TypeScript is like the safer type version of JavaScript, and they don't even consider TypeScript being a part of JavaScript. That just shows you how big the usage are. And a lot of times you can use it for not only client side, but also server side by leveraging, for example, Node.js is built on JavaScript. So a lot of these allow you to be very flexible on the type of work you can do. You can become a client side engineer building front end features using JavaScript. And you can also become a back end engineer using Node.js to build back end services. And it just creates this amazing like end to end flow. You're not like committed into anything, but you are very flexible. And so many companies out there hires JavaScript. So you will be positioned really, really well. And I have noticed some teams, smaller companies, uses Node.js a lot. So there you go. Like you can fit right in when you have to use a backend service that's built on JavaScript. Another thing that's really, really nice is the JavaScript syntax. It's very similar to the other languages that I have mentioned. Over the years, they have gained so much amazing tools, like for example, like the promise chaining, the way that they can deal with asyncs. Of course, like not all of them are equal, like one framework might make something a lot better than the other. But at the end of the day, JavaScript is something that they all share. And once you learn JavaScript, you, ha you open doors for a lot of full stack opportunities. You open doors for a lot of even mobile opportunities by leveraging React Native, for example. So yeah, I would say if you're deciding which language to pick and you have to pick one, I would say JavaScript is your go-to. And JavaScript also make coding interviews a lot easier because recently they have incorporated a lot more Python-like features, making it also very easy a lot of the interviewing questions. So yeah, guys, I hope this video was helpful. Make sure to comment, like, and subscribe. Let me know if you had to pick one of the language, which one would you pick? All right, guys, I will see you next time.